if I go to college and I know my gift and I know my passion and I know my purpose, then I'm going to choose a major that aligns with all three. So, so, so when I graduate, I already know where I'm going and nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm not going to change my career because I'm already in my gift, my passion and my purpose. What up everybody, it's your boy JK, man. Today is Thursday, so you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday with JK, live on IG, and I'm recording for my YouTube channel, Jeremy Kellen, which you can go and subscribe to after this episode, man. All it is is Jeremy Kellum. That's my YouTube channel, man. And I'm also recording uh, for the podcasting platforms that you can catch the Tackle Thursday with JK podcast on, which is Apple Apple podcast um spotify uh and anchor right if you're new to the podcast man first ever time uh, first time ever you know checking it out man the, the tackle thursday with jk podcast is a self-help podcast targeting young adults that are in the midst of establishing things uh in areas of their lives specifically in their career or their relationship status and or their role as a parent and so today the topic that, that I'm tackling, we tackling, that I want you to tackle out there um, is, is the topic of, the topic is triple threat, gift, passion, and purpose. Triple threat, gift, passion, and purpose, right? Uh, and man, just lately, I... The, the the idea of gifts and talents and skills um, and it really has been like at the forefront of, of my mind, um, you know, just in my quiet time with God and reading the Bible. I've been, um, I just, you know, finished up on uh, Exodus. And as you start to get to the telling of Exodus and, and God is, is telling the Israelites, telling the people um, how to prepare his tabernacle, God starts to like really hint at like, you know, talents and, and skills and, and talked about how he, he's gifted them to do basically everything he's called them to do. Um, but in, in one particular scripture, uh, God said that he called everybody that was gifted and talented, right? I'm paraphrasing. He called the people that was skilled and gifted, but he said not only those that are skilled and gifted, but those that are willing, right? Uh, and, and so, um, you know, a lot of us out there, especially young adults, like we realize like we got the sauce. Like you got the sauce when it comes to art, or you got the sauce when it comes to music, you got the sauce when it comes to leadership, you got the sauce when it comes to technology, you got the sauce when it comes to speaking, right? Um, but that's just half the battle. Like God said, yo, I'm calling those that are skilled, that I giving you the ability, right? Uh, but also those that are willing. So so we gotta understand that that it's not just about having skill, but it's also having the skill and the will. Right. Uh, and, and so like, um, man, just lately, like that's, that's just been big, even on, you know, talking on the radio. I didn't did like, you know, probably like three weeks, last three weeks, just really talking about skills and, 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 and gifts and talents. Uh, from God, how man, everything that we need to be all who God has called us to be like, we already got it. We are. It's already in us. You know what I'm saying? We just we just got to bring it out and, and, and it applies in every area, you know, of our lives, man. Even, you know, when we get into like the dating realm, um, because, you know, with the with the with the podcast, man, I, I do talk about that. Right. Because young adults like we're trying you trying to find out hey, who you going to marry, like who going to be my forever boo. Right. Um, You know, if you if you single lot there or even if you are dating or engaged, you know, you're trying to make make sure you're the healthiest you can be going into a marriage and and, and you look at it. Right. The Bible says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing, right? And I'm saying, you know, receives favor from the Lord. But he says a man who finds a wife. So so a lot of times, right, as people, like, we get caught up on the optics, right? To where, okay, they look like a wife or he looked like a husband, right? But but the question is, okay, like, God is cool. He made, He created humans, right? So he's cool for you to like the looks, but you got to ask yourself, are they willing to be a spouse? See, skill versus will or beauty versus the willing. So you can look good, but are you willing to be a spouse? You can look good, but are you willing to put the work in to be the best spouse that you can be? That's that. That's the difference, right? So, so just understanding that. And so, man, so, so, so how I get to this, right, is because when you talk about young adults, man, one of the things that we go through as young adults is the discovery period. Um, and, and just really in 
different phases of our lives, but specifically because I work with, you know, teenagers and, 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 you know, like college students and things of that nature that we, we really trying to find ourselves. Like, we, we trying to find, man, what, what career should I be in, man? Who, who I'm going to marry, who, 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 what business I'm going to start, or, um, should I be a full-time entrepreneur? Should I not? Right. We, we really having a, dis like we try to, we go through this discovery mode, this discovery process, trying to figure out like where I should be, what I should do. And one of the things that that I that I realize is is that um, like we all are working to discover these things. And when you look at college students, right, that there's a high percentage, uh, and I want to look this up real quick. The amount. Uh, and I'm looking this up because I want to get it right about how many people change their major, right? Because there's a reason why. So according to Ohio State University, right, it says 50 to 75 percent of all undergraduate students change majors at least one time before earning a degree, right? And so when you look at that that resounding number. You gotta ask, like, why why are people changing their major? Why 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 are young adults going to college and not knowing what it is that they should be doing? Right? Like, because they make a decision and then you get to college and then you change your major. I'm guilty of that. Right? Or You've been working a particular job, even when you get out of college, you work in a certain job and and all of a sudden you realize like, yo, this this job ain't really what I should be doing. Like, man, I think I need to make a change. Like you just feel stagnant on your job or you feel stagnant in a career that 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 you chose or that you ended up being in. And I believe like God gave me this message, man. Um as as i believe a way to to help people navigate the discovery mode uh discovery lane of as far as what i should be doing and so when i say triple threat i'm talking about gift passion and purpose and i believe that that if we do and we follow those three things gift passion and purpose and, and we find these three three things out as it pertains to us I, I believe that we will have the direction that we need to be in, that, that we will know where we need to go as far as our careers, or we will know what we need to be doing. Or if I go to college and I know my gift and I know my passion and I know my purpose, then I'm going to choose a major that aligns with all three. So, so, so when I graduate, I already know where I'm going and nine times out of 10, I'm, I'm not going to change my career because I'm already in my gift, my passion and my purpose. Right. And, 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 and hey, that's real, bro. They say there's a what well, might say there's a struggle within our younger demographic as it pertains to gifts, skill set, passion and purpose. Right. And so I think the triple threat. Right. Following following. Uh, hey, now nah, you good, bro. Go ahead and put it in, bro. Uh, I believe, man, following the triple threat, man, is it, it's going to give us a. Uh, much guidance, much more guidance, right? And so I had a conversation with my wife and I'm, I'm gonna get into like what I mean by triple threat and, and how I believe that you could discover your gift, your passion and your purpose, right? Um, I was talking to my wife the other day, man, and, and I was like, yo, you know, I said, uh, because I was telling her about my day and I was like, you know, I had a long day, you know, the other day. So I was just like, man, I had a long day today. Uh, and I was like, you know, I went the work, I um I had I, I went and did something else. Uh, oh yeah, I had went to work. I I I coached right. I coached um practice softball practice, and then I went and called. Then I went and called the TSU basketball game. I did all that from getting up. You know what I'm saying? Getting to work by you know uh, having to get up at six in the morning and, and not getting back home about like eight nine. You know eight o'clock right. And said and I said, told her I said man I did all that work. Went to my job coached the uh, team and then I went and called the basketball game and I said you know what not one of those places I didn't want to be I said it wasn't even though it was a long day I said not one place that I was at did I feel like I was at work 
I was like, everywhere that I went today, though it was a long day, I wanted to be there. And then when I think about it, I'm like, yo, I'm operating in my gift, my passion, and my purpose. So everywhere that I went, I was using my gift, I was doing what I was passionate about, and I was fulfilling the purpose for my life. And so when I go, when I went to work and had to teach, and I had to, but got the opportunity to teach at school, you know, it, it didn't feel like work. Like when, literally when I go to school and go and teach, man, it does not feel like work. But I know why. Because I'm utilizing my gift. I'm doing what I'm passionate about doing. And I'm fulfilling my purpose. When, when I go out there and coach, like I literally, like man, I enjoy going out there and coaching, coaching softball, man. And, but it, don't, it doesn't feel like work. Why? Because I'm using my gift. Um doing what I'm passionate about doing and I'm fulfilling my purpose. Then I go call the basketball game and yeah, I'm tired, but I'm on, I'm court side. I'm calling the game and I'm excited. It's not, it doesn't feel like work because I'm using my gift, my passion, doing what I'm passionate about and I'm fulfilling my purpose. So when we fall in line with, Knowing what our gift is, knowing what our passion is, and understanding and fulfilling the purpose in our life, bruh, dog, you don't even feel like you at work. Like, and so that that's what I I I really wanna, you know what I'm saying, hint at, man, and, and, and talk to, man. And I'm I'm gonna get the mic point real quick before I continue to say in the black community there's a push to be a doctor or a lawyer and make six figures plus the struggle sometimes. We have skills, gifts that make us money, but our passion does not align. There's emptiness. Hey, bro, you so right. And that's what I be talking to our scholars about because I had a little debate where this kid, he's an Arabic uh kid, right? His mindset was, hey, if you ain't making six figures, you ain't successful. That's literally what he told me. He was like, hey, he told the class, he like, hey, you ain't making six figures, you ain't successful. And then I had other scholars like, well, we think going to college is successful. Or we think doing this is successful. And to your point, what I'm trying to get and what I want us young adults to understand, man, money. It's a lot of people that's miserable that got bank. That got money in the bank. It's a lot of people that's miserable, that's making buku money. They could travel and go wherever they want to go. But guess what? They ain't really doing what they passionate about doing. So they really dread and going to work. Even though the, the bank account is hitting. Hey, money on top of money. But they ain't really passionate about what they doing. They just, they, they, they good at it. It's a gift. They got a gift. So it make them a lot of money, but it ain't really what they passionate about. So they feel empty. Or... They don't really understand their purpose. So they making a lot of money, but they don't really understand they, they true purpose. So, so it's like, yo, you got all this money, but if I don't know my purpose, then I got all this money, what am I using it for? But when I know I got a purpose, then if my purpose is to bless others, if my purpose is to go build a, uh, help build uh, houses, like war done for, for, for less fortunate people, then, then I get bank. I'm doing what I'm passionate about, war done, did what he's passionate about doing, playing football. Right, but he understood his purpose. I'm gonna take that money. Right, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna go bless all these other people and help build them homes. So he's fulfilled. Why? Because he knew his gift. He knew his, what he was passionate about doing, and he understood his purpose. So is 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 nah, hey, nah. It's, it's hard to find that triple threat, dog. Um, but like you say, bro, when it's found, like life is so rich. Like, uh, like you say, not necessarily a bank account, but the richness of fulfillment, bro. <laughs> Hey, bro, like, when I tell people, I'm like, bro, people might say, man, bro, you're a teacher, bro, they don't make a lot of money. Okay, like, you know, one, I tell people, I say, hold on, I, I thought the same way. And I'm not saying you're going to go and make six, seven figures or whatever the case may be, or you're going to make millions of dollars as a teacher. But what I'm saying is, like, one, there's hidden money in teaching, whether stipends, different things like that. Then, the schedule's so, so sweet that... That, you know, you could have a business like I do and operate your business um, in the downtime within having the full-time job. Um, but but like you said, bro, but the fulfillment I get is priceless. Now, obviously, yeah, we all want to make more money and you could parlay your educational 
you know, teaching career into more money. You see it now with social media, different things. You have your own business, educational consultant, the whole nine, bro. But, but like you said, finding the triple threat is difficult. But when you find the triple threat, when I say fulfillment, bro, you hit it, bro. That's the perfect words, Mike, bro. The, 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 the fulfillment, man, that you get when you operating in your triple threat is priceless. Like I told my wife, I said, yo, I had a long day. I went to work. I went and coached softball. And then I went and called a basketball game. And it wasn't one place that I did not want to be. It wasn't one place that I dreaded going to. Why? Because I was operating in my gift. I was doing what I was passionate about doing. And I was fulfilling my purpose. Right? And so... Now I tell you, right, oh, yeah, triple threat, uh, give passion purpose, all right? So how do I find that? What is that, right? And so the gift, God gave me this, right, right when I was preparing for this too, bro, uh, not too long ago, um, he said, read the uh, short book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Gotcha, bro. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, is that the title, team? Tell me that's the title of the book. Um... Let me know if that's a title, dog. But uh, I, I definitely got to go check that out. Uh, let me write that down. Mm. All right, so how do you find the triple tr triple threat, right? How do you get to that point of... Um, how do you get to that point where you're operating in your triple threat and, and got your routine? I just wrote it down, dog. Uh, how do you operate in that, right? And so the first thing is what I see with a lot of young adults like us, right? Um, younger, older, uh, young adults, and just people in general, is that one, we don't really know our gifts. Like I literally did a poll in my class. I, I was like, yo, what like what what is your superpower? Like what is your super talent, your super gift? Some of them didn't even know. And to be honest, like if you ask somebody in college, if you ask a room full of college students, they might not even know. Like, what are you gifted at? Like, what are you good at? Because the thing is, we all got gifts. We, we all got talents that God has put in us. Like, literally, from birth. Like, everything we need is already in us. Now, if, have we discovered them? Some of us have, we have, some of us has, have discovered more than others. Some of us haven't discovered much. So you feel like, man, I ain't really got no value, man. I ain't really good at nothing, right? It's people that really think they're not good at anything. So when we talk about gift, your gift is what you do, right? Like it's your superpower. And it's not just one thing. You could be good at multiple things, right? So, so for instance, me, somebody, um, one of my teachers had this, man, is, uh, she said that, uh, she had said, she said, what's your superpower? I said, my voice. Literally, like, that's a, that's a gift. My, one of my gifts is my voice, right? So, when I understand that's my gift, then that's what I do. Some people gift, right? Their talent, their gift is to play a sport. Like, that was one, like, so I played, so one of my gifts, I played football. I was blessed to go play professional, had a successful career, right? Um, but I also can speak. So I'm just focused more so on the speaking, right? So, so find out what your gift is. Now, how do you find out your gift? Well, the only thing you find out really what you're good at, what you're not good at is I got to try different things. So this is why it's important is us, even us as parents of younger kids, because a lot of younger does, right? Your kids are younger, like mine, five and three. So it's, it's to, to let them try different things. And, and to see, hey, what do I have a knack doing? What do I just naturally do? What, what do I have a liking, right? Um, and so you let your kids try different things and then they started to discover, oh, I like music. Oh, I like drawing. Oh, man, I'm good at uh, writing. I could put a script together. I'm good at reading. I'm these different things. And so now you're starting to discover what you like, what you don't like. And then ultimately you start to discover this gift. And the gifts you have. And so if you don't know what you're good at or you've been doing one thing or if your gift has a time um, uh, expiration date. And what I mean by that is I couldn't play football forever. So if I thought that the only thing that I was gifted to do was play football, oh, I was scarred. 
And to be honest, man, like, there are a lot of people out there that's playing sports right now that feel like the only thing they're good at is sports. And that is a terrible place to be because at, at some point of time, you got to hang them up. I, my jersey. At some point in time, I had to leave MTSU. You know what I'm saying? Some point in time, the helmet had to go. It had to go down, right? I was blessed to go play after, but even then, I'm done at 26. So we got to understand there's more gifts in us than 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 just things of that nature, right? So so if if you're like me, where my gift to play football expires, like I can still play, but you know, I can still play, but you know what I'm saying? So when it, when that time expires, whether through injury, whether through your own liking or whatever, your own doing, you then got to discover the other gifts. So now it's like, okay, what, what do I like doing? So if you don't know, if you start from scratch as a young adult right now, you're trying to figure out what your gift is. Ask yourself, what do I like doing? What do I got an interest in? What, what will I do for free? Nobody got to pay me. Like right now, I do this podcast every single day. Or I'm doing it every single week. Nobody ain't even got to pay me. I ain't got no sponsor yet. I'm going to get some though. But I ain't got no sponsor yet. But that's cool. Why? Because, bro, I'm using my gift. And that goes into also the passion, right? So, so if you don't know what your gift is, one of the or gifts, I should say, I need it, plural. But specifically, if you're trying to find out a gift of yours, you got to try multiple. You got to try different things to figure out what you like or what you don't like or what you're good at, what you're not good at. And once you start to say like, okay, hey, I got a little neck. Now you're starting to figure out your gift. So for me, I, from a young age, um, I talk. I talk all the time. I talk to myself in a sense of like, um, and I heard Eric Thomas, cause you know, like sometimes you think you'd be kind of like crazy a little bit, but, but um, Eric Thomas, man, I'm in his, uh, you know, I'm in his class and, and, and he talked about how he'll just be, you know, going around like he waiting somewhere with his wife. They'll be at the mall and he'll be like going over, um, you know, his speech for the day. And it's like, who you, you know what I'm saying? But at this point in their marriage now, it's like his wife I already know, like, OK, you working on something. Right. Um, but I, I used to be like that as a kid, like just talking, you know what I'm saying? Even now, like my son would be like, Dad, who you talking to? But, it, but it's just like, I know my voice is my gift. I know it's a superpower. So, so I'm using it. I'm working it. I'm exercising it, right? And, and, and so your gift, you got to figure out your gift is what you do, right? So what you do, what you good at. All right, the only way you find out if you're good at something, you got to try. So that means I can't be scared of failure, okay? Because failing at something or finding out you're not good at something will point you towards, um, hey, I appreciate that, Mike. It will point point you. I receive that, bro. Uh, it will point you failing at something or failing, realizing you're not that good at something will point you towards to try something else to, that that you get that much closer to doing what you are good at, right? And so then once I understand, like, okay, I'm good at this, right? Now I got to think about my passion because just because you're good at something, that gift you can do that gift anywhere. You get what I'm saying? Like, I could use my gift to speak i could be a uh um i could do go to the news and do weather right meteorologist um i could use my voice to uh i could go to a bingo place and 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 call out the bingo cards i can right i could go use my gift in many places you right but i choose to use my gift where I'm passionate, right? So for instance, I'm passionate about sports. I'm passionate about the youth. So where do I use my gift? Oh, I use my gift to call basketball games, to call football games, to call sporting events. I use my gift, right, to go teach. I'm passionate about the youth. So I go take my gift and I go use it where I'm passionate about, which is I go into schools and I educate and I teach and I'm using my superpower. I'm using my gift where I'm passionate about doing. You know what I'm saying? So, so what I'm saying is your, your gift is what you do. Your passion is where you go. So your gift is like the car, right? That you take. The passion is where the destination you arrive to. So, so if you sing, 
That's a gift. You got a nice voice, but you're not going to go everywhere to sing. You go where your passion is. So, so, so you might want to do an um, opera singer. You might, I'm an R&B singer. Oh, oh, I'm a rapper. So, so your, your gift of music and, and doing music, that's what you do. Your passion is where you go. Leadership, you might have the gift of leadership. Or you can go lead anywhere. But you're going to be the most effective. You're going to be the most fulfilled when you go lead in a place where you're passionate about. See, coaches are leaders. But if you're not passionate about football, but you're passionate about basketball, then you need to go coach basketball. Right? Because you could, yeah, you could take your leadership skill and go be a football coach, but you're not going to be fulfilled because you're not passionate about the sport. Or you go... If, 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 if you don't want to be, if you want to be a leader of a Fortune 500 company, then going to lead a football team as a coach, that ain't same skill, but you got to go where you're passionate in that, right? So, so you got to think, okay, once I figure out, okay, I'm a young adult or, you know what I'm saying? I'm a person. I feel, oh man, I'm good at this. Oh, I'm gifted. Okay. Now, where should I go use my gift? Where, what pat, what's my passion? What am I passionate about? Right? How? Where's somewhere I could use my gift? And I do it even if somebody didn't pay me. Because a lot of times when we start off with a gift, people ain't going to pay us to use it. That, that we got to be willing to sacrifice getting paid to use our gift. You get what I'm saying? To use our gift. And then as people see us use our gift and they see us operating in our greatness, then opportunities, you know what I'm saying, start to come. You feel me? Right? Opportunity started to come. So, so um, one, give. I got to know. I got to know what I'm good at. I got to know what I've been blessed with. Right? Then two, right? So your gift is what you do and then your passion is where you go do it at. What are you passionate about doing? And then lastly, right? This this is probably, I think, the most difficult one is finding out what your purpose is. Right? Now, personally, me as a believer in Jesus Christ, um, I believe you got to spend time with God to figure out what your purpose is. I believe you got to stand his word and, and just seek him for re revelation. And, 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 and just as you continue to grow, as you continue to seek God and grow, like God, you know what I'm saying, reveals more and more um, to you as far as like what your, what your purpose is, right? And so your purpose, right, your purpose is why you do what you do. What's your purpose? You know what I'm saying? So, so a lot of people, a lot of young adults, you know what your gift is. And then some young adults, you know what your gift and your passion is. But very few know what their gift, their passion, and their purpose is. That's key, the triple threat. So you could get two out of three. Man, I know my gift and I'm doing it where I'm passionate about. Cool. You, I'm making a lot of money, right? I'm in my gift. I'm doing what I'm passionate. I'm, 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 I'm walking it. You know what I'm saying? I'm using my gift. I, I'm doing what I'm passionate about doing, but it's just something you feeling unfulfilled. Like, man, like I know I'm making a lot of money, but it's just something I'm missing. You might be missing that purpose, right? And so, like I talked about, like being a believer in Jesus Christ, I believe you find out your purpose spending time with God, right? And and basically asking God, like, hey, yo, what, like, what do you want me to accomplish through the utilization of my gift and being at this place or where you're sending me, right? And so, like, for me, my my purpose, my purpose in life, uh, one of them, I should say, um, but a big purpose of mine is is to make a life enriching impact in the lives of others first and foremost for the glory of god um and, and to make a life enhancing and, and life enriching impact in the lives of others to the point where i plant seeds in a person's right now trusting that god will bring forth a harvest through the seeds he allows me and uses me to plant in other people's lives that 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 those seeds will bear fruit and they will be able to live off of that fruit and, and reap a harvest from the fruit that God blesses me to plant in them through the utilization of my gift and being and doing what I'm passionate about doing. So for instance, right? So I'm gonna break it down in, in the three phases that I talked about when I was working as a, when I was going into to the school to teach and then I go uh, coach softball and then I go call the games, right? 
So my gift, right, my superpower is is my voice, right? That's my gift. I can speak one of my gifts, right? Multiple gifts, but this is what I'm talking about, right? Then, right, I go do what I'm passionate about doing. So I'm passionate about uh, the youth, right? I'm passionate about the youth. So I go and teach, right? My purpose is to make an impact in the scholars' lives to where I make a life-enhancing impact life enhancing and life enriching impact in their life so every day that's my prayer right that i go in that 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 i that i teach them in a way i say something to them in a way that i plant a seed in their lives that 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 down the road god will allow them to uh, reap a harvest from. So whether if I'm teaching them a certain skill, whether I encourage them, whether I highlight something I see in them and they realize, yo, Mr. Kellum said, I got this gift. I got this gift for leadership. I could go on and do great things, right? Um, and so that's my purpose, right? To 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 make a life enriching, life enhancing impact in the lives of others, right? Through, through my gifts uh, and my talents. So that's what I do when I go teach. So then, I take my gift of speaking and I go use it through my passion to coach, right? Because when I'm coaching, I'm using my voice and I'm using my words. So when I go out there to coach softball, my mindset is, hey, let me go impact them in a way that I help them be and become better as softball athletes. But I help them go be and become better as people, right? So same thing. I'm using my gift. I'm doing a different passion of mine, which is coaching but I'm still fulfilling my purpose of making an impact, life enriching impact, right? And then, and then lastly, right, when we talk about calling games, right, sports games. So you might be saying, okay, Jeremy, like, like, like how are you in purpose with that? Bro, I got the mic. So it's been times where I'm calling a game and the, the conversation gets very conversational and I use my gift, right, my voice as I'm calling the game. Right. And I'm doing what I'm passionate about doing because I'm calling sports. So that's my passion. I'm using my gift through my passion. And then I say something to impact the listeners. It don't even got to be about the game or it's bigger than the game. Like I remember just talking about um, overcoming adversity and how we got to go through trials and tribulations, encouraging people and impacting people with my words that are there to watch a football game. So. I'm giving you the example of how I operated in my triple threat, my gift, my passion, and my purpose. So I, I and, and because I'm operating in my gift, my passion, and my purpose, man, I'm telling you, bro, it's so fulfilling. Yes, I want to make more money, and I believe I am, but it's so fulfilling knowing that yo, I'm operating in my gift. I'm doing what I'm passionate about doing and while I am fulfilling the purpose that God got for me, like it's fulfilling. And so I want every young adult, every person out there listening to this, I want you, I want you to discover your triple threat. S discover your triple threat. And see, sometimes we shy away from our true triple threat because we feel like, man, you know what I'm saying? My gift, like, I can't make a lot of money with my gift. So you go, you, you, you go do something else where you can make a lot of money, but you unfulfilled because you're not operating in your gift. You're not doing what you're passionate about doing. And then you're not fulfilling your purpose. And so money is great, but it's a lot of people that's rich that are unhappy, unfulfilled because they're not, because they may be operating in their gift. They're good at what they do, but they're not doing what they're passionate about doing. So, 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 see, making a million dollars, doing what you're good at, but not doing what you're passionate at, is different than making a million dollars, doing what you're good at, while doing what you're passionate about doing, while fulfilling the purpose of your life. That's totally different. Because you're like, boy, hey, I'm making bread. I'm, hey, I'm doing what I'm gifted to do. I'm doing what I'm passionate about doing, and I'm fulfilling the purpose of my life that God has placed on my life. And man, when you when you fulfill that, bro, you can't lose. You 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 fulfill. And so when I say, man, when I went to those three locations that day, it was a long day. But in all three locations, when I talked, when I went and coached softball, when I went and called the game, the basketball game on on, uh, on TV, all three of those locations, I operated in my gift, my passion, and I fulfilled the purpose for my life. And um, that's what I want, man, each and every one 
of you out there that's listening to this live and on replay, man. Figure out what your what your triple threat is. Figure out your triple threat. Because when you figure out your triple threat, when you figure out your gift or gifts, and then you figure out, all right, I'm gifted at this. I'm passionate about doing this. So I could take my gift, this passion of mine, while fulfilling this purpose. When you do that, you're gonna get clarity in your life. You you gonna know where to go for my for my senior, high school seniors, my students and my uh students, my scholars in college. Like, man, if you figure out, if you apply this triple threat for, formula, you'll be able to choose that right major that leads to that 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 job, that career down the road. Um, and it'll be something you can you can I believe you could be able to do for a long time. Why? Because you'll be operating in your gift, you'll be doing what you're passionate about doing, and then ultimately you'll be fulfilling your purpose. So man, hey, that's what I got for today, man. Hey, the Taco Thursday with JK podcast, man. Um, we here on Thursdays, uh tackling different topics. And today, man, we tackle we tackled the topic triple threat. Gift, passion, and purpose. And when you figure out those three, when you figure out your gift, your pad, what you're passionate about doing, and your purpose, hey, you're gonna be in, you're gonna be fulfilled at what you're doing. And I want y'all to remember this, right? Your gift is what you do. Your passion is where you go to do that gift, and then your purpose is why you do it. Your purpose is why you do it. So, in other words, right? Your gift is like fuel. Your gift is like a car. You need fuel for the gift. That is your purpose. You put your purpose in your gift and that leads you to your passion. That's where you're supposed to go operate in your gift. So remember that, right? Your gift is a vehicle. The purpose for your life is the fuel that puts the gas in your vehicle, right? Or, or puts the fuel in your gift and then you drive that vehicle, you use your gift and you go operate in what you're passionate about doing while fulfilling the purpose for your life, man. So, hey, once again, man, this Taco Thursday with JK podcast, man. Hey, continue to wake up, try to win on purpose, be intentional about winning and y'all have a blessed day. Holla at y'all.